Today I would like to share with you a meditation that I give to almost every student that I work with. And I credit this with being one of the foundation blocks of my feeling of well-being in my life. And it's uh, definitely time I share it with all of you. This is called the Glow Meditation. It's something that Rebecca and I invented. And we've been doing it for a couple of years. I make sure that I do it every morning. And this is mind conditioning. It transforms the way our mind works at its foundation and sets the scene for each day. And it can be truly transformative. First of all, I have to explain what I call the time of nectar. And the time of nectar is that magical time in the morning when you wake up. This is especially good if you can manage to wake up without an alarm clock. When you wake up and you're not quite asleep and you're not quite awake. And for some people that, that can be just a minute or two. And sometimes you can extend that out to lasting an hour or more. And however long that is, that time of nectar is a very special time because it really sets the scene for our day. And it's a time when the mind is very receptive and open to change. So if my time of nectar consists of three seconds when my alarm clock bzz, 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 goes off and I'm shocked awake, that's going to tend to set my day in that get up and go attitude. I may be very productive, but I'm probably not going to soak into life or really be at my most creative or fulfilled. Now, if we can use the time of nectar very, very consciously, like we do in this glow meditation, we can set the scene for our day in a very different way. Here's what you do. You wake up in the morning and see if you can get up earlier than you usually would. A lot of us, if we just program ourselves, if we think, hmm, let's say you have to go to work and you have to get up at six o'clock and you just think, I want to get up at 5.30. Chances are you might get up at 5.30. And if it doesn't happen the first time, over time, you may find that your mind can program itself almost to the minute when to get up. And so you, you get up at 5.30 and just linger there. Be in that real quiet space. Don't get up and go and, and check email or do anything. Just lay there in bed and drift. And then begin with your glow meditation. G, the first letter, is gratitude. And gratitude, I've spoken about before, it is amazingly transformative in our lives. And there's a laundry list of benefits that start to blossom in our lives when we take up a conscious gratitude practice. For the glow meditation, just think of three things that you really feel gratitude for. And it might be a person laying next to you in bed. It might be the roof that's over you. It might be that I can take a breath and exhale. It might be that you have a body that can walk you, you know, across a room. Family, friends, choose three things. And here's the important part, soak into that gratitude. Don't blow through this meditation. Stop, and if I'm gonna think of uh, Rebecca and how much gratitude I have for her in my life, I'm gonna soak into that. And really just think about it and feel it. And gratitude has a very specific feeling. And as you start to feel it, you're gonna be able to soak into it in a different way. Just practice it, you'll, you'll get it. And feel that gratitude 
So I might, again, start with Rebecca. And if I'm just going to be having a short time of nectar, I can spend five, ten seconds in that state of gratitude for her. If I know I'm going to linger this for an hour, I might spend 10, 15 minutes. Move to the next thing. That might be the roof over my head. I know what it's like to be out in the cold and, and trying to you know, get through a rainy night when you're freezing and, and shivering. And so I can feel gratitude for that rough over my head. And again, I really soak into it and feel it. I choose a third thing and really soak into it. The second letter is L. L stands for love. And again, I'm going to choose three things. I'll just <laughs> annotate that by saying that three is a little bit of an arbitrary number. If you want, you can just do one thing and really soak into it. If you want, you could do ten things. You can even just soak into the feeling itself. Love. I might look over at, at my daughters and feel, just feel that intense love. Again, the important thing here is really soaking into the feeling. I might think of other people in my life. Um, if you have divinity of some kind in your life, you might direct this love towards that divinity. Um, anybody, direct that love. It's very similar to the gratitude, but here you're directing it usually towards a, a person of some kind. And, um, or an animal or other being. Really direct that love and feel it. Next is O. This is oneness. And how you encounter this is going to depend a lot on your mindset. If you have more of an atheist sort of viewpoint, then when you soak into oneness, that might be just using your imagination to spread yourself out into uh, the ground around you, up into the universe, out into the stars, and, and sort of just feel yourself spreading and emerging. Um, again, from that atheist viewpoint, you could almost imagine that you've died and your atoms are spreading back out into the world. If you have a more magical or divine type of, of world viewpoint, then you might really try to soak into oneness with the divine. Or uh, a more earth-based one, I might feel myself soaking into the ground, becoming rock, becoming plant, feeling myself spreading down into the roots of a tree and reaching up. And so oneness is one you'll have to play with a little bit. But the idea here is to see if we can release ego. This sense of self that we have that's so ingrained that when we look at it carefully, we find is usually just built up of a lot of little ideas, memories and beliefs about who we are and how we react to different situations. That little shell that we call ego is uh, in some wisdom ways considered a barrier to understanding our truer nature. And so oneness allows us to explore that a little bit, again, in your own way and at your own comfort level. But see if you can wiggle in a little bit, challenge your idea of who you are, spread yourself out, and, and see what comes of it. W is wonder. And this is a magical and essential part of this meditation because it helps to attune our minds away from judgment into curiosity. And what I do is I just say, I wonder what magical, amazing, wonderful, unexpected surprises are going to come into my life today. And again, soak into that question. Really ask it. With all four of these, if you keep a smile on your face, it's going to add a different flavor to the whole experience. And, and I ask that, I wonder what's going to come into my life today. And that sets the stage 
for curiosity. So as I go out and I counter life, I'm not saying, hmm, well, this better look like this and this and this. I'm saying, wow, I wonder what this is going to be like today. A very, very different way of encountering life. The glow meditation, I urge you to try it and to practice it every day for a while and see if it starts to make some shifts. I've, I've seen this work wonders in people when they take it and they soak into it. And I've said that many times during this video, I'll say it one more time. If you take this as a meditation that you're gonna to try to get through in the morning, it's not gonna have a lot of benefits. If you soak into it, smile, have fun with it, it's a very feel-good meditation, it's gonna have transformative power in your life. It's gonna set the stage for every single day in a very different way than you might have been setting that stage before. And that's gonna let the whole drama of the day, the whole theater, <laughs> if you will, play out in much different ways. So if you try this out, share with me what your experience is. And I hope you have fun with it. And I hope that you discover some neat things when you start to explore it. Please tell me about your experiences down in the comments and we will talk with you soon. Thank you.